Hooks away. You want a zero reps? Zero reps. Yeah, that's... There we okay. go. That looks good. Okay, going down. Let's get some beacons on. You all descending? And deck, did you copy? Copy that, vehicles in water descending. There's a dive status for that. Is it? Descending. And we have tracking. Tone that down a bit. Yeah. We can get rid of the. Uh, I mean, you don't have to get rid of it, but you can tone it down. It, it helps with the grate, the grid, so it isn't so bright. But <clears throat> maybe not so in my face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Opacity. Drag that way down there. Uh huh. That's better. Perfect. I gotta remember this because this is in the submarine. You're not in the submarine, though. No, but I'm gonna <laughs> be, and I better remember it. <laughs> <laughs> True. What okay. Are you, what are you going out on? Uh, Alvin, next month. Next month. Who's Control that? one breach. Do you want us to keep position here? Uh. That's confirmed, Bridge. We can uh, hold position. Okay, Roger. Holding. 
I get four days home and then I go to Alvin. What's it? Where's it in and out of? San Diego. Hmm. Okay, I want some mezzo here. Oh, you have to turn it on there. What like you what doing? We saw yesterday. You, 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 How do we turn it on? Can we get that up there? Did you push a button? No, I didn't push it. Kind of. Oh, is that yeah. the power? Audio slate, audio slate for dive H Hotel 1950 0 Up above. What is it? Is that a C Robin? Mark. No, this. Uh, that guy. A sculpin. So, uh, I don't know what the common name is. This one? Here? We're almost, mm. TJ, we almost at five zero? 42. Roger. You see one? Not today, Zerg. All right, back to home. Over there. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing some diagnostics. Y'all are blowing through 50. Do you want to stop there? Are we, are we doing something at 50? I don't know. Uh, hand deck. over. I'll stop at 50 meters. 50. Okay. Copy that. 50. Taking control up here. Taking control up here. Paying out. Remote switched up to van. Copy. Yeah, Adam, the uh, their, their GUI 50 view is delayed. 50 is different. Probably. Correct, yeah, the winch control is the number we're going off of. Yeah, they get they zero when we go in the water pretty yeah. much. Or? Just use your screen there for a bit, Robert. Here we go. Whee! Okay, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, we have officially launched that, our second ROV right? dive. <laughs> oh. Oh. We have officially launched our second ROV dive of the um, on a never before explored table mount. So this is exciting. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, send them in. Our team will be happy to answer them for you. How's everybody feeling? I feel good. 
Let's go. It's always nice, you know, to get one successful dive in the back. Right, right. And uh, now our rubber meets the road. 26-26. Yep. For everybody tuning in, our expected dive duration is about 20 hours. Expected max depth is 26, 26 meters. There's a little squiggly thing. kind of see some uh, density variations in the water, I think, when you get this little schlierin effect over here. It's kind of like wavy. Oh, really? Yeah. How does that work? all this debris is it's just marine snow yeah I think we're it does look real cloudy like we're going through a scattering layer of some sort right yeah yeah I'm, I'm going yeah I'm going fat stick now we had to stop there for a while we had a bit of troubleshooting to do on the screens here There's another wiggler. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see um, more animals in this layer. Yeah, I bet if we kind of stopped and hovered, maybe. Although they tend to avoid big things like this. What depth are we at? 145. Hmm. And give her a 20. Okay. Aloha. Um, our expected dive duration is about 20 hours. Our max depth is about 26, 26 meters. That's how deep we're going today. And Annie, we're diving in around the Kingman Reef and right. Palmyra Atoll area. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this area is currently being considered for a marine sanctuary. National Marine Sanctuary, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, there is a small National Marine Monument already in the area, and this sanctuary would uh, encompass a, a larger area. I think that uh, it's open for comment from mm -hmm. people about, uh, about the sanctuary. So do we know where to send them to go make a comment? Um, but I know back home uh, we're also um, we're also hosting uh, questions about the uh, EZ mm -hmm. expansion. So the National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa. Um, well, for online, I'm I'm not too sure. Um, I know Nautil Nautilus Live. Oh, Nautilus! Yeah, if you go to Nautilus Live, there right? are links on the on the website where. Uh, the public should feel free to comment, comment about right. uh, making this area sanctuary and, uh, you know, presumably with some, you know, additional protections, but all that remains to be determined. Right. Uh, and so the, the dives we're doing here are really helping to kind of characterize if, what's right. in this area mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully will help people make good decisions about, about a sanctuary status. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, so there is already a marine national monument around right. this area. Um, so this wouldn't add on to the monument and it wouldn't replace it, but it would be in addition to part of the monument and it would extend um, outside of the monument as well in the U.S. 
exclusive economic zone. Yeah, <laughs> got that right. The EEZ. EEZ. Thank you. Um, I'm going to try to find that link for everyone right, right. now. Well, for more information, um, please check out nautiluslive.org. Um, if you are interested in tuning into the talk in American Samoa, check out the National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa website. Are you doing it? Uh. Bridge, Nav. You okay with the 100 meter step? Uh, could we do a step 100 meters bearing 290, please? <coughs> Two nine zero. Correct, thanks. Oh, and we have a question for Samantha. How did you get involved with OET? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I guess we haven't done introductions yet, but Samantha Wishnak, I'm navigator on the H-12. I am normally the Ocean Exploration Trust, uh, which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. Um, I'm usually the operations coordinator for that nonprofit. But I actually started in Annie's seat as a science communication fellow Whoa. in uh, 2016. And uh, cool. then ended up doing uh, managing the digital media for OET and was communications manager for a few years and moved into operations a couple years ago and was lucky to be able to learn the navigation side of things. Um, so my training in navigation uh, has been, ROV navigation has been entirely on the job. Um, Nautilus is a teaching and a learning ship, and it's great for staff to be able to move around roles as well and learn from all of the different departments. Um, but some of my colleagues in the nav and map field um, have, you know, undergraduate or master's programs um, that they've taken to gain skills in seafloor mapping or navigation, um, ArcGIS, relevant certificate programs like that. Thank you for sharing. So we do have some 11-year-olds um, tuning in. I see them commenting. Um, if they wanted to pursue a career um, as a navigator, what advice would you give them? Oh, gosh. Good questions keep coming. Um, yeah, I'd say um, be curious about the world around you. Um, for any job on an ocean exploration vessel like this or a research vessel, um, it's it's all about being curious about the world and working well with other people. I mean, we've got 50 people on board right now, um, working in tight spaces, long nights, um, and the things that keep us going are, are enjoying working together. Um, always, you know, being excited about what's next, what we haven't found yet. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear from other folks in the van on how to right. how to enter. <laughs> How to end up on a ship like this? Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Jules. Um, I am a biologist on board. Um, so I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard. I work in the wow. invertebrate and malacology departments. Um, so I first got involved in marine science um, in my undergraduate degree. Um, I worked in a marine ecology lab with Brian Kennedy, our mm -hmm. um, chief scientist. Uh, I was annotating deep sea footage from a Falcor expedition in like 2021. <coughs> yep. um, yeah, so working <laughs> alongside Brian and Steve Oskovich and 
other people in this field um, was sort of how I was connected with the yeah. Nautilus. I mean, you're not going to be able to keep it, but... <laughs> My turn. Uh, so yeah, I'm Adam Sewell. I'm a professor of uh, oceanography at University of Rhode Island, and I'm the director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, which is NOAA's um, kind of arm in the academic world that uh, includes University of Rhode Island, Ocean Exploration Trust, mm -hmm. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, University of New Hampshire, and University of Southern Mississippi. Uh, my research is on submarine volcanoes. Oh, and wow. let's see, how did I get there? You know, right. I, uh, I worked for uh, during my PhD on volcanoes on land in Hawaii and uh, really fell in love with volcanoes and then uh, did a postdoctoral research fellowship at Woods Hole, where within a month I was diving in a submarine to see volcanoes on the ocean floor, and I said, oh, this is what I want to do. <laughs> and, <clears throat> you know, fast forward 20 years, I've been doing that work uh, using deep submergence vehicles like Hercules here, but also other ROVs and uh, Alvin submersible and, and autonomous underwater vehicles. And now I'm really focused on exploring uh, parts of the ocean that haven't been explored before. Mm -hmm. So really happy to, to be on board and working with an, an amazing group of people who are so interested and enthusiastic and talented and creative. And, uh, you know, just, just getting started on this expedition, I can't wait to see what we're going to find. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. So for your underwater volcano, have you specifically researched in the Hawaiian island chain? Uh, yeah, I've, I've done research in Hawaii mm -hmm. and a lot on mid-ocean ridges. So the East Pacific uh -huh. Rise, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and then a lot in submarine arc volcanoes like the Kermadec Arc, which is in the Southwest Pacific off of New Zealand. Um, you know, fortunately, I've been able to get kind of around the world to see the volcanoes on the ocean floor. And it's actually easier than you think because most really? of the planet's volcanoes are in the ocean. So, uh, you know, a lot of places in the ocean are more volcanically active than any places on land. So it's pretty exciting. Thank you for sharing. Um Wow, we would love to hear from um, Robert Waters. What brought you to OET? Um, so I started as a, with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute in 1996 as an Alvin pilot and started to do OET, I don't know how many years ago, as, as a contractor <laughs> coming out here in my off time. and. And uh, so I've been full time with OET for the last five years. Oh wow! As a facilities manager and ROV engineer, and I, mm -hmm. I do about three cruises a year, I think, three or four. I'm always out here for the shakedown legs. Right. And uh, yeah. So Robert and I have dove in Alvin together, and now Hercules together. Wow. Oh, for our viewers, what's on Shakedown? So we have a, a kind of operating season, or OET has mm -hmm. an operating season that starts uh, early in the year, sometimes yeah. January, February, sometimes a bit later, and goes uh, through the summer. And then everyone kind of stands down for a while in the in the winter. And so that means the it's a time where the ship's sitting at the dock there's lots of repairs being made on the vessel and on the vehicles. And so when you get back into action, it's uh, really useful to take some time to make sure everything's working the way you expect it to. So every year there's a bit of a shakedown to make sure everything's working well. Okay, awesome. A handoff. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. 
Um, let me see. Thank you for tuning in. Um, we are currently exploring um, right outside the Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is this region is um, being nominated to potentially become a national marine sanctuary. So all the work that we're that the team is doing, it's it's to inform that process. Um, expected dive duration is 20 hours, max of depth, 26, 26 meters. If you have any videos, photos, interesting things that you may have seen during our first launch or that you will see in our second launch, um, don't forget, hashtag Nautilus Live. Follow us in all of our social media platforms. Um, thank you for exploring with us.
So we're pretty far away from waypoint one. So what they did in the last one is they did steps of 100 meters. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah, that sounds okay. As long as it's low, like 0.2, point two? Okay. Yeah. All right, point two it is. Yeah. Ready for the first ship move? Bridge nav. Uh, can we do another move of 100 meters? Uh, 290 at 0.2 knots. Uh, 0 0.2 knots, please. Uh, 0 0.2 knots. Thank you. All right, is the whole 12 to four watch in place? It is, woo! Yep, we're all here. Oh, I gotta get the, the Bob is before me and he's got the side tone cranked. Oh, I gotta fix it. Well, this is the first watch for me. I'm Dwight Coleman, the watch leader for the 12 to four. Uh, these seats were occupied by the Impossible Sensing group yesterday, so I didn't... Were you, were you all able to uh, be on watch yesterday? Yeah. Uh, I was. Oh, good. Yeah, I mean, I did a little bit. I didn't you did? really talk too much, though. Okay, good. Lots of lasers. And Daniel, you, you were here yesterday, too, but the internet went down at one point, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, we were on SPL yesterday. Uh, the internet connection was fine, but uh, yeah, it was just like trying to pull up the live data, that was one of the issues, but we got that up right now. Ah, good. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Confirm right, so that uh, the bottom is 26, 26 I got here. Uh, 26, 26 is yeah. our target depth. Okay. And what depth of, are we at now? 7, 4, 3. Oh, okay. Making progress. It'll yeah. still be a while though, won't it? I have 63 minutes to bottom. Okay, not too bad. And what what's our sp descent speed? About 29 meters per minute. Oh, that's pretty fast. Yeah. Cool. And how's the, uh, how, how are we doing with the uh, buoyancy? Are we uh, heavy, light? Do we know yet? Feels feels good. It, it, it could be a little bit heavy, but we've got a lot of yeah. uh, ditch weights on, so. Exactly. Okay. Cool. Good deal. I'll, I'll figure it out when we get on the bottom. Yeah, so we'll just be enjoying the ride for the next hour or so, keeping an eye on things and uh, getting ready for when we encounter seafloor. We'll also be taking some more questions from our live SPL feed. So feel free to go on our website and you can ask a question. And our team here will be able to answer it to the best of our ability. And you'll be along for the ride. And we'll see something new today. Definitely.
Yes. So if you're joining us live for the first time now, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are here today out in the Cayman Reef, northwest of the Cayman Reef, and we are on the NA-149 cruise, the first one of the season of this year. And today we are going to do a very interesting dive. We have a few objectives in mind. So one of our goals is to survey and sample some of the diversity of the deep sea and sample geologic features. In addition to take other biological samples requested by scientists, including corals, sponges, and other invertebrates, as well as geologic samples that may contain ferromanganese crusts and nodules and sediment push cores, as well as water column samples that contain eDNA. And eDNA, it's environmental DNA that floats around in water, and this can tell us about the biodiversity of an entire area of ocean. Awesome. Shall we do some watch introductions, Daniel? Sure. So I am your, one of your SPL leaders today, Daniel. Yep. And would y'all like to introduce yourselves as well? Yeah, let's go around the room, Sarah. Which Sarah? You're up. <laughs> There we go. I'm trying to figure out which Sarah. Oh, yeah, there's two Sarahs on this watch, aren't there? Yeah, they had to put both Sarahs on this watch, huh? Um, but I'm Sarah without an H. Um, are we saying any information about ourselves? or Just uh, just where you're from, I think, and your oh. role. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, wait, sorry. One more time? Where you're from and what your role oh, is. Oh, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm from Temple University. I just graduated from my undergrad. And that's in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And my role is scientist. So I'll just be identifying the cool things we see today. Great. And I'm Dwight Coleman. I'm from the University of Rhode Island. Uh, I'm the watch leader and also the expedition leader for this project, um, NA149. And uh, looking forward to this dive. I sent the dive plan out to everyone last night. And uh, we're excited for it. It's uh, really the first sort of truly dedicated exploration dive of the Nautilus season. So really looking forward to this one. And uh, uh, I'll be trading the watch leader position with um, Leila Bellucci, uh, and uh, we'll work together to kind of leave the 12 to four watch for this expedition. So yeah, Lupe? Uh, yes, um, I'm Wada Lupe Zapata. I'm an undergrad at Tuskegee University. Uh, I am here as a um, ocean science intern, as a data collector. So yeah, I'm glad to be here. I guess I'll jump in now. I'm Sarah number two, Sarah with an H. <laughs> and uh, I'm from Traverse City, Michigan. Um, recently just completed my associate at Northwestern Michigan College. And I am here as a co-pilot um, for the Atlanta. Um, yeah, that's me. Uh, Michael Hannaford, uh, here's a pilot uh, from St. John's, Newfoundland, and currently in Northwest River, Labrador. Um, I'm Cheyenne Waters, I'm from the Coast Guard Academy, and I'm the navigator for this watch. And I'm Amber Flynn, and I'm, I'm the video engineer on this watch uh, from Los Angeles. Happy to be here. And I'll go over a little bit about myself. This is Daniel again. Yep, I am the Science Communication Fellow aboard the EV Nautilus. I am from West Virginia. I graduated from West Virginia University with a bachelor's in geology last year. And I was working as a park ranger at Bryce Canyon National Park in Utah. And this is what brought me here today aboard the ship to talk to you guys. Beautiful place, Bryce Canyon, yeah? Sure is, especially in the winter. <laughs> nice. All right, yeah, so we are descending the vehicles down to the uh, first waypoint of the dive, which is at a depth of about a little over 2,600 meters. Uh, this is uh, the start of the dive. We'll probably investigate the seafloor geology and, um, and just kind of take an initial look around. Uh, but we think that as we progress up to shallower depths, we'll start seeing more and more biological diversity. And uh, uh, basically, it's a general exploration 
uh, dive. So we're going to be keeping an eye out for changes in the geology, interesting uh, rock samples that we might want to collect to further understand kind of the geological history of the seamount. Looking also for ferromanganese crusts and nodules that uh, would be interesting for us to investigate uh, to try to understand more about that process and that resource. And uh, of course, the, the biology. And um, we have a couple of biologists with us on this watch. I'm not a biologist, I'm a geologist. So Daniel and I will be looking at the rocks and, <laughs> and Sarah and Guadalupe will be uh, helping us with the biological identifications. I think we'll work really well together as a team. <laughs> Got a good crew today. Yeah. Yeah, and the really cool thing about um, this expedition is that these areas that we're exploring are completely new to us, so there's potential for a lot of new biology and a lot of new geology as well. Definitely. Even the dive last night, we um, got some bonus work done for exploration and saw some very cool things. It was great. Yeah. Uh, and that was up on the crust of one of these guillots. And uh, um, even with the sediment cover, there was still some rocky outcrops with some corals and sponges and other animals of interest. We should see lots of uh, exposed rock surfaces on this dive and lots of biological diversity is what I'm predicting. Yeah, and um, if you weren't with us yesterday on our first wreck of this expedition, we actually um, collected a few samples between some rock samples. We also collected some bamboo coral, a cup coral, and um, I believe a crinoid with the bamboo coral, and let me think. I think we collected one more thing that I just can't think of right now, but yeah, lots more to come. Is, um on the order of hundreds of meters resolution per pixel. So we're more, at least 10 times better than that with the sonar on this ship, yeah. It's really interesting. And say somebody wanted to follow us, our live mapping, where would they find that? Can you find that on a website or maybe other geomap applications? Uh, Bridge Nav. Yeah, well, so all the data we collect goes to Can a national archive. Right here? Uh, but it also goes to some working archives. Uh, and uh, could be requested or downloaded from these archives. One is the uh, National Center for Environmental Information, which is NOAA's archive. It takes a few months for Nautilus data to get there, but um, it's it's in the mm -hmm. path line. Um, and uh, there's a lot of existing data t there too. So we, we download all the existing data, plot it up ourselves, and then when we go to collect our own data, we make sure we're filling in an area that hasn't been surveyed before. And that's what we did on the transit down here. Cool. And does this information ever end up on uh, applications like, say, Google Earth? I believe Google, well, I'm not entirely sure, but I, uh, you know, Google Earth does pull in imagery, you know, seafloor ima seabed imagery data, but, um, you know, they, they work according to their own timeline and uh, uh, requests process for getting the data from the archives. I'm not quite sure about that process, but, uh, I think they do uh, fill it in eventually, you know, but I have no idea how recent, you know, how frequently they, it gets updated. But you can, if you zoom in on Google Earth, it's pretty interesting because you can see where there is some multi-beam maps and you see the higher resolution on the on the seafloor in, in areas and then you can easily tell where it's not as well. So um, it does eventually, I think, get to Google Earth. But um, it also gets, could get used by uh, NOAA for charting. Um, other researchers are interested in it that are doing oceanographic science. So yeah, Bridge much of now. the data, much of the data that we collect has the potential of being in a public record. Are for you in a see. good position to continue oh, yeah. to hold while we it's, start our descent? It's one of the requirements of our uh, of our funding is that uh, data does um, become publicly available eventually and gets to the repositories. Awesome. Um, so we're going to go ahead and continue our descent. Thank you. And that is one of the jobs of the um, data managers and data engineers on the ship is to back up all that data and make sure that it gets to shore and uh, gets submitted to the proper archives. Nice. Yep. Now Hercules has completed his checks and is now continuing to do its dive.
Yeah, Dwight, they're, they seem to be able to be holding here now, so we're going to carry on. Excellent. Keep an eye on it. Yep, thanks. So someone wrote in from earlier and it was helping us out with our species ID with the uh, protozoa we might have found yesterday. They say the spiky glove might have been a protus tusca, excuse me for pronunciation, tuscaridium. And this used to be classified as a radiolarian. Yeah, I saw that comment, and I think it had had been uh, commented before that it was a, a type of radiolarian. Um, I certainly hadn't seen one that large before. Uh, most radiolaria, I think, are um, you know microscopic-sized plankton. Uh, but so that was a really yeah. Interesting where are they going? This way, right? Is this discovery. anything? Is this where we're going? Yeah. So they're they're. And then can you guys have a figure when we eventually get to the seamount, are they getting dragged into the slope? Because that's going to be a pickle. Yeah. So we don't like that, right? Yeah, there, there, may, there may be an option by how we picked this dive track um, to be up up higher on a ridge or on another side of the slope that may be more favorable to where the cable might get tugged. So we, we can look at that and shift our waypoints if we need to. Sure, yeah. yeah. I think we did pick the waypoints for the dive to favor one side of a ridge. Uh, I believe we were favoring the west side of the ridge and if it makes sense to move those to the east side of the ridge we, we could do that but th but there shouldn't be too much navigating along cliffs or anything like that Yeah, if you if you if the ship can maneuver, we have another what, 16, 1,500 meters to go. So take it really slow. But I mean, yeah, I'm fine with that. It's just uh, either way, whether we stay still or whether we're going over there, it's just if if it's get, if it's not able to hold position, that's all I'm looking for. But if we if, yeah, go by all means, go over there at point two. Bridge now. Can we do a 50 meter step, uh, five zero meters at three three zero, and at point two knots, please? Okay. Um, then just hold position for now.
They said they said they can't go Mhm. Mm <laughs> yeah, it's too much on the beam. Yeah. But even then, I think he's saying that they can't, they won't be able to maneuver. And then the other thing is, too. And we're also on his, like, leeward side, right? It's dangerous for us. If you can't, if you can't hold, he's bringing us into the slope. Yeah. Then it, if we were on the other side, then we can be on the windward side, and if they can't hold, at least we just get dragged off into deeper water. If you want, I can have Deb and Adam uh, pick a better set of waypoints. Yeah, do you, um we might, we're going to have to do something, I think, Dwight, if they can't go up the slope and yeah. then like to re to reorient on the other side of the slope, that's quite a distance. Yeah. Right? Right. So, yeah, now would be the time while we're descending to shift those. Uh, so he's getting, he's having trouble moving in and moving toward the east. Is that correct? Yeah. When he go, when it, we're asking him to go like uh, uh, north. Uh, yeah. Or west. Is this north up? Yes, north. Yeah, so we're, we're asking them to go northwest, but that's like the weather's on the beam. Yeah. Oh, wow, look at this. Oh, oh that's cool. Whoa. Oh. Is that a siphonophore? Looks like mm. it. Probably something along those lines. That was <laughs> cool, though. Kind of looked like a chandelier. I did. All right, I'm... I'm going to go um, down to the data lab and talk about this with the scientists. So that creature that just floated by, we suspect to be a siphonophore. And this is a type of nidaria, which is the same phylum that contains jellyfish and things such as man wars And they're not actually one singular organism, they're actually a collection of uh, other organisms together that goes symbiotically. But their relationships are incredibly complex that it's not very easy to pin down whether it's a one singular organism or just a colony that works together. And oftentimes we find organisms such as that down here in the deep ocean that don't exactly fit into the category of just being an animal per se as it has specialized cells and our big investigation that we do is to learn what are the evolutionary drives of creatures that work in this symbiotic relationship.
So if you're joining us again, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are currently out in the Central Pacific Ocean by the Kingman Reef, and we are currently descending our ROV Hercules down to the ocean depth. We are currently around 1,300 feet, uh, 1,300 meters below the sea surface, and we will be expecting to be there in a couple of hours. So I'm going to tell you all some fun facts about ROV Hercules. So our ROV can go to a max depth of about 4,000 meters. But on this expedition, we're doing about 2,626 meters. And our ROVs can stay underwater for a very long time. Uh, usually our average uh, big length of time we can run them for is 24 hours. But we've had them up to several days down there. Instead of having onboard batteries, they are connected via a tether to power aboard our ship. And this tether includes other communications as well as a stabilizer to keep Hercules from drifting too far apart from our ship. So Hercules is a greco Roman mytho mythological figure. He is a god famous for his incredible strength, stamina, and far-reaching adventures. 
and Hercules was named from our uh, leader, our founder, Dr. Robert Ballard, because he loved Greek and Roman mythology. He also loved many other stories, such as Jonas and the Argonauts, and the tale of 20,000 Leaves Under the Sea by Jules Verne. In fact, the name of our ship, Nautilus, comes from the Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues. Hercules is also equipped with other ROVs that help along its journey. This includes the ROVs Argus and Atalanta. Argus is currently aboard our ship in storage, but Atalanta is down there with Argus. Excuse me, Atalanta is currently down there with Hercules. Atalanta will sit above Hercules to help with stabilizing the ROV from drifting too far from our ship, as well as providing camera views of the ROV as it's doing its operations on the C4. Hercules also comes with a pair of manipulator arms to collect biological and geological samples. This also includes other sample collection tools, such as a sorp tube, is literally a tube that we use to slurp up samples such as C4 sediment or little pops or other organisms that may not be big enough for our uh, robotic arms to pick up. And we also have other sensors to measure pressure, depth, water temperature, oxygen concentration, and salinity. These are all important metrics for us to have when doing our sample collections because it tells us about where we find many of our samples and what the conditions are that they live in or have existed under for who knows how long. It's also because of this tether that connects Hercules and Atlanta directly to our ship that we're able to get you live feed of our dive today. This is called telepresence. So telepresence is set up where we have a fiber optic cable connected from Hercules and Atalanta up to the Nautilus. And the signal is beamed straight from our satellite dish aboard the ship to a satellite up in orbit around Earth. This is then beamed down to a way station. And I believe this is the Inner Space Center at the University of Rhode Island in Rhode Island. And this is broadcast to the rest of the world live on the internet for you all to see. And there's only about a three second delay in between our signal here and to you all. So it's near instantaneous feed. So many of our crew is on a watch list, and our current watch includes one of our navigators. Her name is Cheyenne Waters, and she is a student from the Coast Guard Academy. She is interning on our ship today. So a good way to pass the time as we're going down to our destination is to tell a few jokes. Does anybody have any wet jokes they like to tell us? I'll say now that I'm really, really bad with jokes, so don't expect anything too great out of me.
I have a question for you. What's your favorite sea creature you've seen so far? That's a great question. I'd say it was definitely a variety of things we saw yesterday, but I'd say the coral. They come in so many different varieties, and what I love to spot on them are the brittle stars, just their noodle arms just wrapped up around their spikes, and I don't know, it looks like they're just trying to take over the coral, but in many ways, from what we've learned, is that it might be a symbiotic relationship that they're doing there. So they're just surprises all around. What about you? So recently I got to see, it was one of those um, Magna Pinna squids and they have really long tentacles and it just kind of floated by and it looked so unique and beautiful. And so those that's my amazing. new favorite. <laughs> I'm so hoping we get to see one of those. Yeah. Those are incredible. I feel like really any any cephalopod really makes the crowd go wild, but um, yeah, there's a whole lot out there. I think, I mean, we really haven't seen much yet, and I'm not going to lie, the rest of the watches um, for the duration of the previous dive, I was fast asleep, um, but I'm really hoping we get to see a sea cucumber. I really yeah. like those. And I'm also hoping for another shark sighting. Sharks are awesome. I think there was a shark really briefly in um, yesterday's dive. In, I heard yesterday's yeah. dive. Yeah, we just we didn't get to it, but um, yeah. So there's this one species of octopus that many have seen around the internet and I believe it's called a magna pina squid and this is a very creepy looking squid it has these extremely thin tentacles and it almost looks like an alien do you think we'll spot something like that out here or is that a different part of the ocean well I did get to see one uh, on this trip so far so I think we're in its area so hopefully we'll see another one Speaking of octopuses and squids, I have a little question for you. What do octopuses put on their toast? Oh no. Oh Ocean no. current jam. <laughs> Love it. That's Terrible. a little cheesy. Terrible. <laughs> Bring them on. I love those kind of jokes. I like this one. Who keeps the ocean clean? No clue. The mermaid. Ah. That's why I call <laughs> mermaids. See, I feel like a lot of these jokes, it's like, if you gave me enough time, I would have thought of that, but they're just so clever that it's like not something you can easily think of. Yeah. They're all good dad jokes. Like I this one. It. How do you cut the ocean in half? With the seesaw. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one has to be my favorite. Yeah, that's a good one. I guess I'll give a plug for the, um, the questions now, too. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the link is, but Daniel can give you that. Um, if you have any fun jokes or any questions that you have, please feel free. We're here. Um, for the next, I don't know how many hours, how many hours has it been? Three? No? So 19 hours? Our dive is 19, or 20 hours long? So we have 19 hours left. So send in your questions. Yep, we're all here for them.
And here's a joke from the chat that I find pretty interesting. So, why did the octopus wish for two extra arms? For a dance move? I don't know. What do you think? So you it can could have ten, ten tackle tackles. More things. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I got it! Amazing! So, an octopus with ten arms, what would that be called? But not... I'm not gonna guess. Ten tackle? <laughs> I don't even know if that one's a joke, I'm actually curious. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. Is everybody ready? Bridge nav. Can we move two four five at point three knots of uh, five zero meters? Yes, please. So what's the correct way to say the plural of an octopus? Is it octopuses or octopi, or are both correct? I have heard, because it's of a Greek origin, that it should be octopuses. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. I guess for me it's like a tomato-tomato thing. I know what you're saying either way. So while Daniel is taking a little bathroom break, um, I'm just glancing over at his screen looking at some messages. Um, we've gotten a few people asking what our, what the greatest thing that we could find would be. Um, and you know, in my personal opinion, there's really not one thing that we could find that's like the most jaw-dropping amazing thing. Um, it's an expedition, so we're just looking for anything that's new, anything that's the same as what we found before. We're really just making parameters for what the deep sea has to offer, um, and that can be really anything. So I don't think having an expectation is, I mean, you can have an expectation, but I think for everyone it's a really unique answer. But if you have something you'd really like to see, manifest it maybe. <laughs> Someone also asked if the sizing measuring lasers are on. Um, yes, those two lines that you see in the one camera, those are our lasers that gives us perspective of um, measurement, and they're 10 centimeters.
Um, and just another silly little question, just to keep things light as we navigate and descend. Um, someone asked, I lost it, wait. If everyone on watch had the opportunity to learn to do another job on the ship, what would it be and why? Anyone want to give input? That's a good question. I don't know, there's lots of good jobs on the ship, but not knowing how to drive a ship, or I would have to say to be able to drive the ship beyond the bridge. Yeah, I think the uh, I think the crew is something that's overlooked, not necessarily for any bad reason, but just because it's something that you don't really think about when you think about deep sea navigation, looking at these um, ROVs the whole day. But I was going to go with um, learning more about the engineering behind Hercules and Atalanta, because I, I for one, have absolutely no knowledge of anything outside of very general physics. Um, so learning engineering would definitely be something cool. Okay, now jump in. This one's a really difficult one because there's so many different things. I think Michael had a good uh, I good stole suggestion. an obvious good one. Yeah, because <laughs> that, I, I have no idea. And I feel like there's so much to that. Um, but then also, uh, also being just, you know, part of the science team, there's so much information, you know, being a part of this and, and co-piloting and seeing what amazing things come across the screen. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's so cool. What is that? Yeah, you know? okay. And I get to... Yeah you know, be, be educated throughout this process. And it's just really amazing the different things that we have no idea what's down there, you know, and, and that's what's really neat about being able to live stream these expeditions. So everyone gets to be a part of it and learn all of these incredible things. So, yeah. And the other really cool thing about um, Ocean Exploration Trust and Nautilus Live is that um, there's, a huge Bridge, Nav. there's a huge emphasis on science communication. Can we go um, another five zero meters at 245 degrees and 0.3 knots? So everything we do is live streamed Thank to, you. Our, to the best of our ability. And I think it's a really important skill that I I'm really trying hard to improve on. Um, and something that I would really love to learn more about. Yes. So here's a fun fact, something that I found out a few months ago. Did you know that Nautilus has a band? <laughs> we we a have band? a band? What is this band? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I got a CD of it before. I haven't no, listened to it yet. No, you don't. You <laughs> don't? Wait, is this real? Leela, do you know more? Are we going to yeah, play Lila? a little, little piece from it? Oh, I'm oh. not in the band, but I have heard the CD. It's great. We could get some <laughs> elevator music funny. for our descent. Very funny. I would love to hear that CD. <laughs> um, Michael, is there power yeah. to the still cam right now? Is there a lot with the still cam? Is it on? Power. Uh, Power. Power. Uh, yeah, yep. It should be. Okay, sweet. Thank you. I am going to mess around with it a little. Yep. Yeah. So here's an interesting question for the chat. If everyone will watch, or those who, who can talk right now, had the opportunity to learn to do another job on the ship, what would it be and why? Daniel, I'm so sorry, but 
I read that question while you were gone, but do you have an answer? That's a great question. So I'd say what I would be interested in doing is being an ROV engineer. I just find uh, the ROVs to be so fascinating with all their instruments and exactly how they work together. And it would be interesting for me to be the person in the room to help with that. We have many interns and engineers who are already working on the ROVs currently in our control room and down in the uh, deck to do other activities. And I talk with them about what their jobs are and it just seems so fascinating. And oftentimes on our shift, we had the chance to be interdisciplinary or get to try out other jobs. Sometimes it's not as in depth, sometimes it is. And one of those is the wet labs. Sometimes you'll see us rotating in and out of the wet labs, and taking samples from our ROVs and sorting those out, putting them in data logs, etc. And that is really cool to get to touch a piece of the ocean and get to be one of the scientists in the room to help with that. I'll also Front row friends real quick. I don't know if they're listening. One sec. Sorry, one moment. You can continue, I'll, I'll chat with them after. It's all good. I was just gonna add that um, once we retrieve the ROV, you can actually watch us process our samples in the wet lab. Um, we have a dedicated camera for that, so yeah. Michael and Cheyenne, uh, I know you're doing a lot of chatting through stuff that not everyone needs to hear up there, but if you wouldn't mind for the data logger, occasionally giving an update when we shift plans would be much appreciated. Yeah, so basically um, we're not gonna go up the seamount. We're gonna kind of go along the base of it just because where the ship's position is. So we're just backing up a little bit to give ourselves more room to explore. Um, and we're going to stop the ship at about 23 hundred meters and then uh, let the ROVs uh, get into position and then we're going to go to the bottom. So this is going to be a shorter dive. Okay, sounds good. And we're still planning to then move at around 30 degrees ish in or whatever the, into the direction of the forces once we're at the bottom for uh, yes. a little bit. Just see how it goes. That's right. Okay, great. So how's Hercules Bridge doing? Bridge nap. Right? Is Hercules looking to continue to dive? Can or we, we do just another planes? five zero meters at two four five and point three knots? Thank you. Sorry, I missed that. Was our question about Hercules or something? Uh, yes. Is Hercules continuing with the dive, or is there an adjustment in our plans? Well, we've made an adjustment because we can't just the just the nature of it, the way everything is oriented. We cannot drive the ship up straight up the slope the way we want to because it's just just the way the weather is today. It just happens that the bow being into the weather uh, for us to go up the slope is pretty much directly on the beam of the ship. So that's like the most difficult. It takes the most force basically for them to drive. So they can't. So we can't do that. So we're trying to uh, make lemonade by. Um, just kind of backing down along the track of the weather. And then we'll go, uh, and the bridge informs us that we can travel basically like 30 degrees off our heading each way, but beyond that, it's too much for the DP system. So we'll figure out what we're capable of doing. So basically we'll be going upslope as much as we can, but it won't be uh, directly upslope. Thank you for that.
So if you are just tuning in, welcome aboard the exploration vessel Nautilus. We are currently in northwest of the Kingman Reef, which is an area of ozone protected by U.S. waters within an area called the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. We are currently exploring an unnamed guillot, and this is a tabletop seamount underneath the ocean floor. This is our NA-149 cruise, the first one of the season, and welcome aboard our first expedition. Yeah, that's it. Cheers. Thanks for the help. So some of our main objectives today include an interesting sampling plan. We are looking at the sea floor morphology to suggest that the sea mounts that we are exploring should provide access to eruptive basalt. This is a type of igneous rock, rock that has seepage from below the mantle up into the ocean floor. This can be key for us to understanding just the uh, inner geological processes of Earth. And this could also give us clues to something called ferromanganese crusts, or ferromanganese nodules. This is the type of crust that forms from minerals collecting out of the ocean column and settling onto hard substrates. We will also be taking sediment cores from the ocean floor. This includes sampling the sediment that's the bottom. This can include uh, things such as marine snow or eDNA. This is environmental DNA that is floating around naturally in the environment. And this can give us a clues about biodiversity of a certain section of water. We'll also be taking samples of other biological curiosities. We can sample them to un understand exactly what species they are, understand the morphology and how they work, and we might even discover new species. And overall, this work will help us understand and create a biogeography map of an area, understand the distribution and diversity of life in the deep ocean. This is important work that we do because we are pioneering explorers. Roughly 70% of our planet is covered in water, and yet only 5% of it has ever been explored. So much of this is in uncharted waters. Much of what's below the surface, that is.
So question about Hercules, how long are we expecting to reach our target? Not very much longer. It might take an extra few minutes. Just uh, stand by one. Can we stop, stop the ship here now? So we're at 2,300 meters, but we've been towing um, in, in reverse. Uh, so we're just going to stop the ship, let the vehicle swing in. Maybe it's 15 minutes. Yep, so I'll stay tuned. We'll be there soon. Yep. So yeah, can we zoom in here a little bit and then just watch them, make sure they're not uh, they're not drifting on us. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, so the bottom's still going to be 2,600-ish. We're kind of swinging in like this, so we're losing altitude now, right? Mm. For now. Uh, maybe I might hold. I might get you to hold the winch at 24. Actually, just be on the safe side. It's only another couple of minutes. Okay. So, our Buller ROV. There are some many new exciting technologies that we are testing out for the first time, and one of those is a Brown spectrometer developed by Impossible Sensing. This is an instrument that they put on a laser dive bot that they are looking to do a spectral analysis of C4 geological, geological features. And this is a technology that they're developing for potential use in deep space missions. This is an instrument that was tested out yesterday during our first dive. Is this still aboard the Hercules today or is it testing is done? Um, it's not on uh, right now. It, co it comes off and on. Um, so they, they did their tests yesterday. I think it was uh, largely successful. And uh, But um, it's for some dives and not for others, essentially. It has a depth rating, I believe, that is... Uh, it can't go as deep as we are today. I think it can only go to 1,500. Yeah, that's right, so. I think, yeah. Slower down. Yeah, yeah, just stop the winch there till we get back out behind the ship.
So we have some more questions coming in for the SPL. So one of them was asking, are there any sounds at the depths that we are at currently? Or is it usually pretty quiet? So I'm not sure if our ROVs are equipped with any uh, sound detectors, but sound does travel at these depths. In fact, sound can travel faster the deeper you go. Sound is a product of a wave as an energy moving through particles in a medium. This can be air, water, or solid materials like metal. And we often find that the noises we can detect in the ocean from other instruments include things such as naturally occurring sounds from whales or earthquakes or underwater landslides, and human-made sounds from ships, underwater energy exploration, military sonar, and underwater, underwater construction, among others. Any question for the ROV team, if you have a moment. Do we prefer scientific, commercial, or a mix of both as operators throughout the seasons? Mm, you want to go? What was that? I think it was what kind of operations do you prefer, scientific or commercial or uh, other ones? Um, Correct. I guess for my background, my favorite definitely is scientific. <laughs> That's That was like my dream to... Uh, become a, a pilot and co-pilot and engineer um, specifically for for science missions yeah for me I start I actually started off in industry like a lot of us do because there's just more opportunities there and I didn't do that for very long maybe almost two years got my training wheels off so to speak and I've only worked in science ever since most of us that work in science are pretty committed to it. I think probably there's not a lot of, op well, there's less, there's less opportunities. So when we're here, we're kind of in some sense like lucky to be here and it's pretty interesting and really good group, and really good work. And I know for myself, I didn't, uh, I didn't ever try and do any other ROV work other than science once I started to get involved in it. Okay, Sarah, I'm going to try and get under get under Argus now and just drag everything out to the back of the ship. Okay. Can you zoom in a little more on this? Yep. Thank you. It's just, uh, yeah, you don't have auto heading on or anything, right? Nope. Yeah, leave it off because it's going to probably flip you around. on the camera right now, but it's not wanting to go down. So we're about 200 meters from the bottom of the seafloor. We're just getting the ROVs in position for the last couple hundred meters. So we should be on the bottom in the next 10, 15 minutes. Yep. Yep. It's just, yeah, we did that long drag astern. So it sticks, takes a few minutes to get us back out behind the ship where we're meant to be. So we're going to go over just a few questions in the SPL. So somebody noticed in the feed earlier that there are little fish swimming by. Do we have any idea that what that could have been? Um, I mean, I just saw it very, very briefly. It could have been anything. It's kind of difficult when they're super fast and we're descending. But um, I did see that it was more like, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> But as we descend, we will definitely get better looks on our inverts and vertebrates. So hopefully we can get some more IDs soon. That's great. Um, 1.32 knots. I think he's having trouble. Mm -hmm. Bridge nav. Okay. Uh, can we go ahead and stop the ship? Just, yeah, just hold position. Uh, hold position, please. Yeah. Hmm. 
So in today's dive, we are expecting to launch at a depth of 2,626 meters yeah. below the ocean surface. Our expected duration will be about 20 hours. So if you want to take a nap and catch back with us in a few hours, we'll still be here. <laughs> uh, can you repeat that, please? OK, thank you. Uh, can we stop descending, please? Um, stop on the winch. Okay. Okay. Well, Dwight, you on the comms back there? Yeah, I'm sort yeah. of paying attention. What's okay, going on? yeah, so he's just lost it with the ship a bit. We're all stopped yeah. up. Gotcha. Yeah, let him get get a handle on things first and yeah. keep going down. Yeah. Winds, winds are a bit gusty and uh, st steady, uh, and so there's some swell out there, so. Um, video, can we get the wire camera? There's a, a camera off the transom for the wire angle. Oh, I got it, never mind, it's right here, sorry, sorry. Currently, our ROV Hercules is over 1,000 meters below the ocean surface. Do we are currently holding. Yeah, we were descending quite rapidly, and the ship is doing its best to hold position in its uh, dynamic positioning. And uh, sometimes they get um, pushed off a little bit, and they need to recover. And we uh, sometimes get into a situation where the ship is going backwards to try to maintain uh, position on station and uh, we don't want to back down on the on the wire that's uh, uh, got Atalanta attached to it. Yeah, we've been feeling some big swells today. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it, we're operating in a safe condition, um, but we're, you know, close to the edge where sometimes the DP uh, uh, struggles you. a little bit if we're operating at full thrust uh, uh, sometimes we get off station a little bit but um, usually that's okay at the depths that we're working at there's so much cable out in the water that um, you know the Atlanta and Hercules ROVs won't really get tugged or move around and the ship can recover itself fine but uh, we always have to be in constant communications with the bridge and keeping an eye on things Can you zoom that in a little? Oh, that's good. So I'm kind of curious, what happens to Argus? Uh, why are we using Atlanta instead of Argus on this dive? Well, I don't think there's uh, a, a really terrific explanation other than that Atlanta has been used more frequently lately and is a little bit um, easier for us to um, uh, basically operate and it's working really well and uh, we're giving its chance. <laughs> <laughs> so Argus is on board the ship and could be swapped out with Atalanta if we need to. But um, I don't know, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong. Most of, most of the instruments are already on. The, some of our best instruments are on Atalanta now and it's working well, so we're sticking with it, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, that is the majority of the reason. And I think there's a, uh, Atalanta has an added bonus of not being quite so heavy. And when we get into these deeper depths, like some of the some of the uh, dives on this expedition, 
uh, Atalanta is probably better suited for that, for the res what we get resulting in cable tension when we're, in, when we're down really deep. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot about that aspect of things, yeah. Um, sometimes we struggled with Argus. It weighs a lot more, and um, uh, at really deep depths, uh, it puts a lot yeah. of tension yeah. on the cable. So that is one of the reasons to stick with Atalanta for now, is that cable tension issue. And it's still happening. How come you just had somebody in SPL ask you specifically, Dwight, are they still wear, making you wear a mask? Uh, bridge nav. Uh, can we start driving forward? Ma make us wear a mask? About... <laughs> we, um, uh, um, we are under mandatory mask wearing until we take meters. our next antigen test. But uh, afterwards, it's optional. Uh, yes, please. So some, some folks on board may s still choose to wear a mask uh, to say COVID safe, uh, et cetera. But uh, I think the majority of us will be not wearing them after tomorrow if we all test negative. Mm -hmm. um. Especially on isolated environments yeah. such as a ship, it's very important for us to all make sure that we're healthy and tested. So masks are a big precaution. You know, We want to make sure that everybody is able to do their job and everybody's healthy. Because we are a long way from land to do anything about it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, bridge nav. Uh, can you also increase speed to 0.5 knots? Thank you. Something I will say that we're seeing right now, um, we're not seeing too many animals and organisms right now, but what we are seeing is a lot of mm -hmm. marine snow. And this is a very common trait okay. of the shallower waters. And as you descend, it becomes much less because of um, just how little, just how many organisms there are in the shallower waters and the upper level of the water column. But marine snow is <coughs> very, very crucial for um, nutrient cycling, um, the larval stages of a lot of different organisms, and yeah, once all this, once whatever snow gets down to the bottom, that's also what makes up a lot of the sediment on the seafloor. So, so far for you all, on our last watch, I'd say, what's the wildest thing you've seen? I know we had quite a few uh, wild moments on our last watch. Would anybody like to talk about that? I heard last watch they saw a shark. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that was a really cool shark. And it just floated in and out of the scene. It was very fast, but it was really, really curious about what we were doing. So it was nice for him to stop on by and check us out. And we also saw something that was very interesting. It was like a gelatinous like sphere that had all these little spikes around it. And it was just floating in and out of the shot. And it's, it was really interesting. One of our um, scientists on here identified it as some sort of protozoa. So we'll be seeing more of that on our website. Yeah, that was a really interesting um sort of alien species didn't it look like it <laughs> that orb our, one of our lead scientists Brian Kennedy also identified a, um, a jellyfish that was uh, 
um, a predator on one of the corals, uh, eating one of the polyps. And uh, he's observed this before, and others have, have observed this before, but not frequently at all. And we did attempt to sample uh, these uh, really tiny jellyfish, uh, but we weren't able to get that sample, unfortunately. But uh, we'll be on the lookout for more of that activity today. This might not be super interesting or related to the deep sea, but um, as someone who's come from the East Coast and not particularly near an ocean, um, it's been particularly uh, interesting for me to just see all of the different Can we have wildlife. another five zero meters, same speed, same heading? Yeah. Just, o just outside of the boat, like last Thank night, you. I believe we saw some mahi-mahi, and that's a really interesting and um, commercially important fish in these seas and it's just something I've never seen before and something I'm really privileged to see. Yeah, it was really nice to spot those last night after a long night watch and to come out and see these buddies swimming by our, our boat. It was really nice to see. So our C4 mapping is a very interesting topic that we like to talk, that we like to investigate here on the Nautilus. We are currently sailing, and we sailed all the way from Honolulu, Hawaii, and along the way we were looking at the bottom of the ocean and mapping features that had never been seen before in high detail. Um, do we know how high of a resolution our uh, C4 maps are? Uh, well, the, we, we have a, a sonar system on Nautilus called the Kongsberg EM302, and it is, um, uh, has an orientation that, uh, you know, ha allows us to uh, collect a, a resolution that's kind of fixed but changes with depth. And so um, it's optimized for deep water surveying. Uh, and I don't, I can't rattle off all the statistics on resolution, but for the most part, while we were transiting between Honolulu and where we are now, we were crossing big sections of abyssal plain, which is down more than 5,000 meters depth. I think I saw kind of an average of 5,600 meters for most of that transit. And uh, the swath that we were collecting were, was more than uh, 10 miles wide. It was uh, something like 12 to 15 miles wide uh, at times. And um, so, th so you're looking at, you know, resolution of sort of each pixel on on the map of the seafloor would be uh, uh, tens of meters say uh, I don't have the exact number but uh, uh, that's about the resolution that we map at which is unbelievably good compared to the non-existent data uh, that or the data we can get from satellite altimetry which 